Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, October 26th, 2023. And I have to tell you, I've been in this business that's going on 44 years. And I've never been more concerned about what in the world is going on than now. And it's old news. You look at one of our top trends for 2023, and it was Middle East meltdown. We warned about this word for word for word for word that it was going to happen. Again, all the details are there. We've been reporting on it week after week after week. It's a weekly magazine. There's the just a, some of the articles, just some of the articles about what was going on in Israel. And the 39 weeks of protests that were going on because of Netanyahu's judicial reform that basically killed the courts and said the politicians are in charge, so I don't have to be go and be brought up on the charges that are being brought up on. 39 weeks. According to Haaretz, the Israeli newspapers, uh, 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 Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post, there was a civil war going on. And as I keep saying over and over again, when all else fails, they take it to war. So I just what we just talked about, what I just talked about, judicial reform, 39 weeks of protest, totally forgotten. Let's hate Hamas. And I hate Hamas for what they did. But I also hate Israel for what it's been doing in slaughtering innocent people and the genocide that they're committing now. I'm against both of them because I launched Occupy Peace. So I just don't talk about it. I do something about it because I'm a warrior for the Prince of Peace. So we're at a very, 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 very critical time. And if we don't change this soon, it's going to be the end of life on earth because this is escalating far beyond what anything I've ever seen in my life. And World War I, World War Three already began with the Ukraine war. Oh, the Ukraine war is out of the news. Fuck the Ukrainians. Who cares about them? Nobody cares. Began with that. So now you got the Ukraine war that's still going on. Several million refugees that fled Ukraine, their lives destroyed. And I've been warning over and over again, when all else fails, they're also going to do a false flag event or attack a nuclear power plant, do something to that effect, so Ukraine gets back in the news. Again, when all else fails, they take you to war. And the global economy is failing. High borrowing costs pose threat to resilient economy. Well, this is in today, uh, yesterday's Wall Street Journal. Treasury route deters companies from borrowing as finance costs soar. Yeah, no shit. You ready? UN report says global economy could be heading for systemic crisis. The latest UN trade and development report presents a picture of a global economy wrecked by lower investment, again, high interest rates, and growth, the increased domination of giant corporations, yeah, the big zone, everything, all you are plantation workers of slave land here. Fuck the drug stores, the stationery stores, the grocery stores, and the hardware stores, they're all chains. And that's all we are, we're chained to the plantation, as the plantation workers of slave landia. Financial speculation, a falling share of labor income, and raising rising social inequality. Again, all old news. All old news that we have been forecasting on and on and on. Oh, this is from the Financial Times. Shanghai and Shenzhen stocks drop to pre-COVID lows as growth fears intensify. No fucking shit. It was the Chinese that gave us the COVID war. They launched it. 
on Chinese Lunar New Year 2020, the year of the rat. This is our Trends Journal magazine two weeks after they launched it when all the world is worrying about the coronavirus. 106 dead in China, 1.4 billion still alive. The new black play? We called it bullshit from the beginning. And again, I used to be on Hong Kong TV back in 2019. Million people were taking to the streets in a city of 7.5 million. A million people out of 7.5 million in America, the gutless country of America, you can't get a million people out out of 332 million to talk about peace. They were fighting the Chinese takeover. And I'm taking a break with the guys. So, well, Frank, what's going on? What, Mr. Salenti, we're not going to stop. We're not going to let the Chinese take over. Guess what? They launched the COVID war, locked down Yuan, locked down Shanghai, Beijing, Hong Kong, passed the security law, boop, over, totally forgotten about. Totally forgotten about. So no shit that their stock markets are down. They had three years of zero COVID policy. They destroyed the lives and livelihoods of hundreds and hundreds of millions of people in China. And it's global, as the reports are showing. Oh, the markets today. Oh, the markets are down today. No shit. Blow me away. Hey, play that tape of us, of me forecasting now before you play it go back to november december january february i'm on with with you know everybody all over the world saying no the markets are going to go up in 2023 they'll go down later but they're going to go up because the last 40 midterm elections in america the s&p 500 went up over 16 percent, and it did and then this summer, while everybody was celebrating, here's what the Trends Journal forecast. It's going to start happening in late September, October. The reality is going to set in. But as we said, the big decline is going to start happening in September into October. Again, we believe they're going to start going down in September and October. But don't worry. Things are going to look good during the summer. You're not going to get the reality until the end of September and, and, and October. The reality is going to start hitting in mid-September. They're saying the worst is yet to come in late September and October. I maintain my forecast that late September into October, that's when you're going to see the big decline. Trends Journal had forecast that the markets would go down late September and then to October on the economic front. We had forecast that the markets would go down in September, late September, October. So we're going to see the markets go down in September. That's our forecast. And they may crash by October. Very, very possible. The economy is going to go down. The equity markets we're forecasting are going to go down. Today's the 31st. It's not going to be a happy September. All right? There you got it. You show me anybody, anybody, anybody in the world that said that. Anyone. Show me anyone that forecast it. Oh, the NASDAQ now? Oh, it's in correction territory. It's down over 10%. The worst is yet to come. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. Trendsjournal.com. We're giving you history before it happens. The trend is your friend. And we're the only, only trends magazine in the world. Now, don't give me your fucking bullshit. Oh, these are the, the, these are the fashion trends. You know, fuck off. Grow the fuck up. And it's, by the way, it's the grand total of $2.86 a week. 
So the more subscribers we have, the more that we can do. And we're giving you what you can't get anywhere else. This week's like over another 170 pages. All right. Roche secures $7.1 billion for bowel disease drug specialist. Roche plans to buy immunity. I'm only mentioning this because each week we have bigs getting bigger. The bigs are getting bigger. The bigs are getting bigger. They own everything. And they own all of these little scumbag motherfuckers and fatherfucking politicians. Idiots and morons call it campaign contributions. They're little suck-up fucks that are ruining our lives because these bigs buy them out. So, this thing's going down big, it's going down fast, and it's going down hard. Ready? Sales to Gucci parent disappoint. No fucking shit. They disappoint because they ain't buying crap over there in China because they destroyed the fucking economy and the economy's going down global. Yeah, I know. We just had big GDP numbers in America. You know what that is? Shit. Yep. So going back to the Israel war. I have the Salenti one state solution to end the Israel war. Bring democracy to Israel. End the Jewish nation state. Make it one state, one nation, in which all people are created equal. This little fucking scumbag clown, this little fucking dick, Lindsey Graham, that the fucking mainstream little prostitutes, these little gutless little boys and girls keep putting on there. This is what he said. We're fighting a religious war armed with Israel. Huh. A religious war? Yeah, I know. You ready? Best-selling book, Trends 2000, my book. One about Crusades 2000. Crusades 2000s began. It was initiated with the Balfour Agreement Declaration back in 1917, when his majesty said, we're giving Jewish land in Palestine. His words, his majesty. A little fucking murderous dick. His majesty. I don't shit, I don't piss. I'm in a majesty. Yeah, look at the fucking clown. Look at this little fucking jerk off. That's the clown over there now. Look at that picture of a little fucking scumbag. This little, little King Charles. Look at him. These are the dickheads. These are the little pricks that are running and ruining the world. How can you be so fucking stupid to listen to him? Oh, no, I listen to... Mitch McConnell. Yeah. No, no. I, I listen to, to Biden when he's not falling down the stairs. So. It's a religious war. I'm with Israel. And again, I know this. This is Crusades 2000, which I'd forecast. So who's God is the real God and whose God wants you to kill in the name of God. And where are all the religions? We got Lakja. Where are the preachers of peace? Nowhere to be seen. So I have the solution, the one state solution. And this Jewish state stuff. I don't want to... Hey, hey, Isaac Herzog, you could save your fucking shit when you said God gave you this land. Fuck off. Fuck off. Let's make it equal. 
This is the America that slaughters people all over the world in the name of bringing freedom and democracy. And as I said, end the Jewish nation state. Make it one state in which all people are created equal. So this is from Vox, mainstream, 2018. Israel's hugely usually controversial nation state law explained. And this is brought to you by the murderous guy Netanyahu. Israel passed a controversial new state law last week. That's sparking both celebration and fierce debate over the very nature of Israel itself. The law does three big things. It states, you ready? Quote, the rights to exercise national self-determination in Israel is unique to the Jewish people. So all the other people living there in Israel, you don't mean shit. You're not equal. We're above you. Number two, it establishes Hebrew as Israel's official language and downgrades Arabic, a language widely spoken by Arab Israelis, to a, quote, specific status. And number three, and this is nice, it establishes, quote, Jewish settlement as a national value. Oh, you could steal all the fucking land you want in violation of the Geneva Convention, of Article 242 of the United Nations. You can steal any fucking thing you want. It gets better. And mandates the state, quote, will labor to encourage and promote its establishment and development, end quote, of more settlements. So throw out the people out of their homes, God gave us this land. Get the fuck out of here. This has to stop. Again, end the Jewish nation state. Make it one state. Make it a democracy where all people are created equal. Because, yeah, this is a big story in the New York Times, right? Russian missile fired from across border. Killed six, Ukraine says. Oh, Ukraine says killed six? You only killed over 7,000 Palestinians already in the genocide against Gaza. That's okay. But this is big fucking news. UN chief denounces clear violations of international law in Gaza. Chief UN chief Antonio Guterres condemned, quote, clear violations of international law in Gaza as the U.S. added to mounting pressure on it, blah, 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 blah. protecting civilians can never mean using them as human shields, the Secretary General said. <laughs> Adding that this does not mean ordering more than one million people to evacuate to the South, where there is no shelter, no food, no water, no medicine, no fuel. And they continue to bomb the South itself. So call this guy a liar. Well, they did. Israel calls on U.S. chief to resign. There we go. Can't tell the truth. World is failing Gaza, United Nations. This is today. The international community has so far failed to fulfill its base, blah, 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 um, uh, and protect civilians in Gaza amid the continuing Israeli bombing campaign. U.N. Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs Martin Griffiths said on Thursday, Israel's, quote, heavily bombardments are getting worse, even in parts of the enclave that was supposed to be safe. And is <laughs> the rules of war are clear. Civilians must be protected and have the essentials to survive wherever they are and whatever they choose to move or stay. The UN official also said today, the world itself is failing to meet the bare entitlements of a part of humanity. Oh, they don't count. They don't count. It's the nation state. They're num they, they don't count. Here we go. Today's New York Times. Or Tuesdays, excuse me. 
Developing world accuses West of double standard over Gaza and Ukraine. Gaza deaths rise as anger flares in UN speeches. Look at the slaughter. U.S., now this is very important because it goes back to your top trends for 2023, Middle East meltdown, where we said they're going to drag Iran into this. And if Iran gets into this, it's going to be the end of life on Earth. It's going to be World War III escalated into a nuclear war. U.S. moves to deter Iran from entering conflict ahead of Israel's Gaza invasion. So it's okay for Israel to invade Gaza. And the U.S. is using Israel's blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so it's a warning, right? U.S. may target Iranian crude strategist. Washington is likely to tighten crude oil sanctions against Tehran over Iran's alleged support for Palestinian middle groups in Hamas. The head of global commodity strategy at RBC Capitals Markets, Helma Kroff, has said. Talking on CNBC, Kroff suggested that the West and the Biden administration would, quote, at a minimum, curb Iranian energy exports. The argument is you can continue to allow Iran to keep the bank open for groups like Hamas. No, that's what she says. Yep. Blinken warns Iran as militants backed by Tehran stage attacks. Today's Wall Street Journal front page. Again, what we're giving you, nobody's giving you anywhere else. All things are connected. Opportunity misses those who view the world through the eyes of their profession. We look at things for the way they are, not the way we want them to be. I'm telling you, mini meltdown has begun, and they're ramping up the war against Iran. Weapons flood West Bank, fueling fears of new war front. You ready? Tehran and its allies operate a smuggling network that crosses hundreds of miles and at least four borders spew out Sune Angla Ramusin and Banat Fulkan. Yeah, fuck you, Khan. Who the fuck are you to say this shit? Oh, we're repeating the crap that they shoved down our throats, Salenti. We're prostitutes. We're media whores that get paid to put out by our corporate pimps and our government whore masters. Because we're war whores on parade. Then you go on top of that. You ready? Here it is. Take a look. Hamas fighters had trained in Iran before Israel attacked. You see what this is leading? And again, you are not allowed to say anything, anything Contrary to the shit coming out and the shitheads in charge like that arrogant fucking prick over there in Florida, the DeSantis. Yeah, the little fucking warmongering DeSantis. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis bans pro-Palestinian student organizations. The State University System of Florida said on Tuesday that it would dismantle chapters of the Students for Justice of Palestine. You got to get all those Jewish votes down in Florida, huh? As you're failing to run in the presidential election and even getting close to Trump. Dump. This is the fuck that was down in Guantanamo that kept that going over there. You like murder, don't you? Israel press feeling fear in covering dissenters. New York Times. Last weekend, at least a dozen people surrounded the home of left-wing Israeli commentator who expressed concerns about civilian deaths in Gaza. All right, they call him a left-wing commentator because he's concerned about the genocide in Gaza.
shouting traitor and firing flares in his direction. You're not allowed to give another side of the story. A record one point, a record 114 million people displaced globally, says the UN, because of the wars going on. So we got a lot more, a lot more. All I'm saying to everybody listening, you better do something for peace. You better do something for peace. If you want to donate to Occupy Peace, fine. If you don't, fine. Do something. If we don't unite for peace, this is the end of life on earth. How fucking stupid. How fucking ballless and dried out can you be to suck the shit coming out of the mouth of a little fucking prick like Lindsey Graham or Mitch McConnell? Or Joe Biden. Or Anthony Blinken. How fucking gutless and stupid can you be? Where is your soul? Where is your spirit for peace? As I said, when all else fails, they take you to war. And you're watching it fail in front of us. The future's in your hands. Don't drop it. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men since Samuel Adams. And we're that irate, tireless minority. United we stand, divided we die. Thank you. At the Trans Journal, the best investment you could make because it's the best investment into your mind and it can change how you look at the world. His work is actually a gold mine. Anybody interested in politics, political trends, economic trends, social trends, cultural trends, you have to follow him, Gerald Salente. The Trends Journal is one of the greatest sources of information, and it's uh, and it really is. You're predicting these things well ahead of time. I would encourage everyone to go grab the latest copy. Been a Trends a Journal subscriber for 20 years. I just have to commend you. What you guys have put together in your latest Trends Journal, there's nothing like this out there. Sir, everything that you predicted about the economy, you are absolutely right. So I, I, I have followed you all this time. So please take a look at the Trends Journal. You correctly forecast that the Fed would hike rates quite aggressively. Correctly said that initially gold and silver would drop as the Fed starts to raise rates to one and a half percent and above. When we spoke last, Bitcoin was around 49,000. You said you expect to drop and if it drops below 30, 35, then it could really drop. Trends Journal, which I would encourage people to go and check out. It's actually a 200 page document, pure data driven analysis. Gerald Salenti, the top trends forecaster in the world. Gerald, you had an interesting call back in September of last year. You said gold had bottomed, which is exactly what happened. And here we are and we're above $1,900. Subscribe to the Trends Journal. Read history before it happens at trendsjournal.com.